Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mark Chang, and I'm here talking about foam rolling today. It's probably one of the best parts of your workout that you may be missing, or something that you might want to take a different look at. Now, a lot of times people will use a foam roller as a kind of passive massage. So they'll lay the roller down, uh, and let's say there's a part of their body that hurts, like their lower back, and they'll lie down on the roller and roll their lower back back and forth. Um, one of the things that I'd like you to do during the course of this clip is to consider what parts of your body might be feeding into the pain in somewhere else. So where the site of pain is might not be the root of the dysfunction. Now, there are different kinds of rollers you can use. There's a smooth roller. This particular one is not super firm. Um, it has a little bit of give, but it's just firm enough um, as a starter roller. Definitely not bad. Um, this happens to be my favorite roller. This is a textured roller called the rumble roller. Um, the little nubs you see are kind of like the same size as the thumbs. Um, so for giving you a little bit more uh, myofascial release, or deep tissue work in, in the tighter muscles and trigger points, this is a very valuable tool. Now, as far as for the lower back, which is a very common site of pain that I hear about, um, not only in my clinical practice, but also dealing with athletes and other trainers, um, if you've got the lower back that you're trying to develop or trying to strengthen, um, or anywhere else in the posterior chain, one of the first and most important things to do is to take off the parking brakes, which lie in the front of the body. And more often than not, the front of the body uh, part that gets the most tight is going to be in the hips. If you can't extend the hips fully, it's usually because the hip flexors are locking you down. Now, to get into the psoas, while you, there's certainly some styles of massage and deep tissue work and acupuncture that um, say that they can find access to the psoas, it's very hard for you to do that with a roller. Uh, the, the quads, however, are another part of the hip flexor complex that's, uh, that's easy access. Um, and very often overtrained by most people who are doing squats, who are doing lunges, who are uh, climbing hills. A lot of these sorts of workouts, even plyos, can overwork the quads at the expense of the glutes or expense of the posterior chain. So one of the ways we're going to look at undoing that today is by foam rolling the quads. And so you're going to take the roller. In this case, I'm going to use the rumble roller. You use whatever you've got available to you. Um, and again, if the roller is too soft, it really won't give you the adequate feedback. What you want to look for is uh, something to give you enough pressure into the muscle bed so that you're aware of where your tension lies. Now to set up, put the roller down. One leg that's going to be in contact with the roller is going to be on it. The other leg is going to be off to the side for ballast. You're going to lie down. Your hip bone is going to go right atop the roller. Like so. Your other leg is off to the side. Hips are facing flush to the ground and wag the leg that's in contact with the roller. It's very important for you to relax that because if you're tensing up like this, the muscles are, are, are so tight that they're resisting the pressure of the roller. You want to be able to relax this down, wag this out, and then slowly, in three, four inch increments, just roll back and forth along the roller, working your way from the front of the hip all the way to the knee. So as you go towards the knee, it's even more important to just sort of wag the leg out, let it be relaxed, come all the way towards the knee, and then come all the way back down. And go slow. Foam rolling is not a speed sport. You should be able to take your time, move through each three, four inch increment, and relax your breath out. Once you've done this forward 12 o'clock line, go 45 degrees outward and do the vastus lateralis. Um, a lot of times, uh, people will tell you to roll the IT band, the IT band is a tendon, so the tendon doesn't have that much contractile ability. The vastus lateralis, though, is a muscle, and that does. Um, so if you want to really take out tension along that line, go after the trigger points of the muscle, not so much the tendon. So to get the vastus lateralis, again, start hip in the same position, but now turn your pelvis 45 degrees off vertical. Again, wag the leg to stay loose, and then work your way, three, four inch increments, slowly along the roller. Now, as you work your way down the vastus lateralis, especially for most people and athletes that you see that have what's called valgus collapse, in other words, when they bend their knees, their knees cave inwards, or when they land up or jump, their knees cave inwards, um, the vastus lateralis on athletes like that or people like that tends to be rather tight. So you may only get maybe six inches down the vastus lateralis, and the pain is so intense for that person, if they're relaxing properly, that they're about to have a come to Jesus moment. In cases like that, back off a little bit, let them find a point of relative comfort, 
and have them relax, breathe, shake the body out, and then gradually ease into it. Again, foam rolling is not a speed sport, nor is it about masochism. Take your time, work through, the, work through those lines, let me know how it goes. Thank you very much, and for more information, please visit drmarkcheng.com.